body hacking, a term that encapsulates everything from hair colorings and piercings to more notable examples such as body modifications, if not outright limb replacements. We're going to spend the weekend here at the Austin Body Hacking Convention, and while I do anticipate meeting many interesting people, our first guest, James, is most definitely the star of the show. Do you just plug it into a wall, or how do you charge it? Uh, it has a high-voltage lithium uh, poly polymer battery, and so it's kind of sensitive, and it needs to be charged in the correct way. Well, the big question is, how does it feel? Um, it's really interesting, actually. It's it's got a it's got a unique feel. It's quite heavy because of all the technology we put in, um, but also light because of the materials we use. We have this high tech carbon fiber, which is just like the lightest thing that we could have chosen. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to incorporate some cool stuff. It's got lighting in there that we can activate. It's got it's going to have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, heart rate sensor, and stuff like that to reflect my heart rate through the arm and stuff. So it's, it's going to have a whole bunch of different features as well. There's it a drone as well. <laughs> drone. I always forget about the drone. It's going to have a quad cup to mount it on the side. James's arm came out of the Phantom Limb Project, an initiative where video game developer Konami teamed with technology companies and sought to fit a gamer with a prosthetic similar to the one worn by Venom Snake, the flagship character in Konami's Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. This is inspired by the Metal Gear series. Uh, Metal Gear has always kind of explored the relationship between humans and technology. You know, we've got lots of cyborgs in the series. We've got, you know, um, mechanical, big mechanical weapons. And so using this idea, um, we thought of like, maybe we could create this amazing arm for an amputee gamer. So a friend of mine called um, Sophie de Oliveira Barata makes incredible um, alternative prosthetics. And so I kind of put two and two together and asked her if she'd be interested in working in this project. And she was really up for it. So uh, we sort of sent out this survey uh, to find this an amputee gamer who was really up for the idea of having an amazing alternative limb. We found James. We have um, a 3D modeler called Rudy. We've worked with Open Bionics, who have made the uh, bionic hand. Now it's not switched on at the moment, but there's some uh, sensors in James's harness which work on, on his muscles and he can send signals to his hand and, and perform all these different gestures which he can program himself. But the main part of the arm is made of carbon fibre by a company called GTR, Global Racing Technologies. To be honest, the, the best thing about it is just how it looks, to be honest, because I've tried um, to get used to our health service prosthetic that I got in the UK and it just has no personality and for me, with my high level of amputation, it's not a great deal of use. Is there anything implanted in your body, anything internal? No, uh, this this product, project is basically, we found each other before I'm, I'm going to the implanted stage. I'm basically fundraising at the moment to uh, get titanium implants into my bone. So basically I don't need to have this big harness, which I'm it's just holding this thing on and it would just connect to my bone directly. But it costs so much money. And in the UK, we can't get that on our health service. So I'm really fortunate to have tried this 3D printing hand. And the, the great thing about the 3D printed hand and Open Bionics is that they're making it accessible for people to have this kind of thing at a really low cost. Do you guys have any plans to make more of these? Is this an ongoing project? I mean, it's been such a labor of love for everyone, I think. You know, we just want to make this absolutely perfect for James. Um, there aren't any plans in the moment to, to make another one. In case you were wondering, James was polite enough to share the story of how he lost his arm. I've seen the footage of the CCTV and basically I kind of step towards the train as it's arriving and then I'm just walking alongside it and then the next frame I'm like falling between two carriages and it just removed my leg at the time and my arm was later amputated like a couple of hours later because it was severely damaged. We'll finish with James shortly. The conference hosted a number of startups eager to help those with disabilities. One demonstrated a vest that could help the deaf perceive sound. We are creating a vest that a deaf person can wear to learn to understand speech and sound. So it's a sensory substitution vest, uh, which means that it's taking one sense, in our case sound, and uh, uh, presenting it to you through a different sense, in this case touch. So we've got these vibrating motors, kind of like what's in your phone, um, and they're spread across your torso and the sound is translated into patterns and played through those motors um, onto the vest. Also in attendance was DangerousThings.com, a group that, quote, believes biohacking is at the forefront of a new kind of evolution. We caught up with them as they provided free RFID implants. Well, I just got chipped. Um, it was definitely not as painful as I was anticipating. It's actually a 800 megabyte chip 
and it's got its own serial code, and so it's like my own personal encryption key. That um, we'll see. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, software and hardware that's compatible with this, and I can basically pick and choose what um, what I want it to do. One of the things he was saying is that I can get this removed pretty much at any any point in time by any piercer. It's very close to the surface, and so it's just a small excision um, in order to get it removed. Is there any cost to getting the procedure done? Not today. It's free. How can your uh, organization afford to give it out for free? Uh, well, this is just a, a promotional event. So uh, we, we crowdfunded the development of this, and uh, we just have a lot of them. So. Uh, it was uh, the the campaign was way more successful than I ever thought, and so for Body Hacking Con, I mean it's the first con that I've been to that's about body, body hacking and biohacking like specifically. So um, yeah, I figured I'd just do them for free. Back to James. With all the advances in technology, we wanted to know if he felt artificial augmentation is the future for humanity. I think it's basically so endemic in current culture and video games and films that it's literally, we're becoming more open to it and it's gonna happen. Um, at the current rate, the current technology we have, I do not recommend envying anybody with an amputation because we're not anywhere near being good enough to, to <laughs> augment a body part or, or lose something for something else. You can find more reports at InfoWars Director's Cut on YouTube. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139.